apparently he was pitching ideas for months and they kept turning everything down. He would talk to Vince and Vince would say he doesn't have anything for him. Then he started, Brody Lee started doubting himself, even though he knew he was good. Uh, Then, of course, here's the demolition story. Before asking for his release, he again asked Vince why they don't have anything for him. Vince then yelled at the writers on why wasn't Lee in the upcoming Andre the Giant Battle Royal. They penciled him in and told him it would come down to him and two others. The day of the Battle Royal, they told Lee there would be 10 guys left in the ring when he got eliminated. Vince then told him they want him to be Sami Zayn's heater. Lee says he doesn't want to be somebody who walks behind somebody else again, but he will try to make it work. Two days later, that got canceled, and he asked Mark Carano for his release. Vince talked to Lee twice afterwards, and he said Vince was nice to him. Vince asked him if he wanted more money or a push, and Lee said no. At this point, he just wanted his release. Lee went online and said he asked for his release so the WWE couldn't control his narrative, as Sean Spears did earlier. On Vince's second call to him, he told Lee that for business reasons, we can't let you go, and they added six months to his contract on a wrist surgery he had. They were going to have him sit at home. Triple H called him and asked what he wanted, and Lee said he wanted to wrestle. Triple H asked if he wanted to go to NXT or New Japan, and Lee said okay. And then that oh boy, that used to be the kiss of death in the nineties. Well, they go to Japan and get some experience, and that way we'll you'll be in another country and we won't have to fucking look at you. Well, what's interesting about it is Triple H saying that he can get him into New Japan, which raises some questions. What was the relationship at that point with WWE, Triple H, and New Japan that Triple H felt confident, or at least said he did, that he can get him in there? Well, also he was saying that also, regardless what you know they're. They obviously didn't want the guy, but they didn't want anybody else to have him that was going to be in competition to them. Um, I understand that philosophy with guys who you're pushing in a top position. Well, yeah. But what about, I mean, Sean Spears obviously left. Matt Hardy wasn't really. Where is Sean Spears? In the the federal witness protection program now, by the way? Yeah, with Tully Blanchard. Um, Matt Hardy left. Matt Hardy wasn't really pushed as a top guy there. Brody Lee. Not a top guy there. Even Cody, obviously, not a top guy there. Do you think it's interesting that they're so concerned about guys that are mid-card as opposed to, you know, they locked up Randy Orton for another five years? It's not really the top guys that are jumping. Moxley, you could say, was a top guy. Jericho, a top guy. But no one else. Well, Jericho didn't even really jump. He was kind of doing his own thing to begin with. Um, you know, I, 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 I think now they just, not only do they not want the other side to have any arsenal of weapons at all but also it'll make them look really stupid if the other side comes up with a way to get these guys over and that they couldn't of course so far that's not looking like the case i'm not even burying brody lee he seems well spoken he looks big and fucking impressive and even though he you know he whiffed the boot or whatever the fuck but you know you could get a guy like that over, but how, who is he and how do you get him over? That's the question. He has the tools. The, the, the blueprint is there for somebody that you could get over as a, you know, wild ass kicking fucking guy or whatever. But first the guy himself needs to know how to get himself over. If he doesn't know that, and if you can't, some guys, you, you look and think, boy, they, they ought to be stars, but you can't think of the way. You can't think of the the gimmick. You can't think of the way he should be presented. Can't think of the way he should look. It's like it's there somewhere, but we can't figure it out. And if, if Brody Lee thinks that he's going to get over by being the leader of this clown show and or wearing that outfit that we saw him wearing and and or not just big booting and standing on everybody in his way for like 16 weeks to smash him over on television and rehab his image. You know, he's, I haven't seen him, but before it was him and him and the other guy, Harper, right? Um, Or Rowan, which one was he? Brody Lee was Luke Harper. Okay, Brody Lee was Harper. Rowan is the redheaded bald guy that it looks like he's wearing a fucking mechanics fucking jumpsuit. 
And remember, I said, what the fuck is this guy? What? Who is he? What is he? What's his background? Why do I give a fuck? They just made him, even though they pushed him, they're just two big fucking guys. There was no backstory or personality or gimmick or character, as they say, that that you feel like is really that fucking guy that he could, t- I just, I'm, I'm, I can't articulate it exactly, but there once in a while with some of these guys, there's just, you can't figure out exactly how they should be presented. And apparently Brody Lee cannot figure that out for himself, or he should have had this all planned out. He finally gets to go to another national TV promotion. He gets free from the place that wouldn't let him work. These guys are willing to let him work, but he lets himself get stuck in this fucking abortion of an angle with his goofy group. And instead of being a wild, crazy, ass-kicking, fucking mean-ass, psychotic motherfucker like he would look like, he's wearing a suit and cutting his steak and mad at people who sneeze. I don't... It doesn't... It does not compute. What you see has to make sense with what you hear and what the person does. And I sense a disconnect in exactly, you know, who the fuck this guy is and and how the fuck they're going to get him over. He should be by himself or with a manager. He should smash people, run up a fucking streak of wins to give him some credibility. But how do you present him? How does he speak? I'm not sure. But just the same way as, if you know, if, if they did a Hulk movie, and the fucking Hulk smashes through the goddamn concrete wall and opens his mouth, and instead of saying Hulk smash, he talked like Kenny Olivier, people would laugh and it'd be the end of the Hulk. It has to sound and look and have a backstory and a fucking understanding of who this guy is all together, and I don't think that anybody has put that together yet that I've seen. 